If you have a senior dog or one with limited mobility like I do, you're going to want to stay tuned for today's video. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Tanya and my sidekick Dexter, my little senior, is actually out having his afternoon siesta, so he won't be joining us today. Extra sleeping is definitely something our seniors like to do, but today I want to talk about mental enrichment and engagement for our seniors and our special needs dogs. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and you can click the bell icon and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And for those of you who already subscribed to our channel, we thank you for your support. Today I have a special video that's near and dear to my heart, and that's about engaging our special needs dogs. So Dexter at almost 14, and Dexter was also diagnosed with Chiari malformation, which is very common in the Cavalier breed. He was diagnosed just before his third birthday. So he's always struggled with some mobility issues, and it's always been extra important for me to make sure that he still stays engaged and has an enriched life. And as he's aging, I'm actually modifying some of the tricks and games that we've been doing throughout his life. But just like younger dogs and ourselves, our dogs still need mental stimulation to stay happy and healthy as they age. So today I'm going to show you a variety of low impact tricks that you can do with your dog. Puppies also have limits on what they can physically do as they mature and grow, so some of these exercises and tricks will be good for puppies too. But as always, please speak to your dog's holistic veterinarian before starting anything new and taxing, just to ensure that they're safe and healthy for your dog. And if you think that your dog is struggling or not understanding the task at hand or seems a little hesitant, go ahead and back off and wait and ask your vet to make sure it is something that they can do. Your dog's body might be telling them not to try that behavior and you need to listen to that. So let's get started. So here we are. We're going to talk about three behaviors we can teach our chatty Kathy dogs. So one of them is what I did here was nose target where we teach our dog to put their nose on our hand. You can also teach them to do it on an object too. <laughs> But I always start with my hand first because if my dog knows to put his nose on my hand, then I can get him to move places. So, <laughs> so I can move him around and good job. So with nose target, don't teach a paw target at the same time. So if you're doing a shake or a paw and it's new to your dog, then don't teach a nose, nose target because it gets a little confusing for the dogs. So one or the other if they're, if they're new. Um, the other thing is, as I'll show you, we want the dog to come to our nose, not go to them. So at the very beginning, I'm going to take anything and everything that the dog does related to my hand and their nose. So looking at it, moving towards it. I don't want to close the gap. So if the dog comes in like this, I don't want to go and close it and touch his nose because then one he's not doing it and two he's going to actually probably learn to move away from it because he doesn't like it coming in close to them. I'm going to take my hand and kind of move it away from the dog so that they have a little bit of interest like what is that and I'm going to yes and treat anything. Now remember with Dexter he knows how to do it so I'm going to toss the treat to him and go away. Oops, he didn't see it, so he's going to go away. He's still in. Did you see it go away? There you go. So you're going to go, yes, and then yes and treat with your dog with any interest. So again, you're moving it away, but not too fast, just a little interest. Your dog won't be quite as fast at it usually, but yes, and then yes and treat. So he's doing a little hopping. What that tells me, one, is he's excited, but it also tells me my lure is probably too high. So I'm going to pay attention more to him instead of the camera. So I'm going to, yes, yes, now, and I just said senior dogs, so look how goofy he is, yes, 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 okay, so what I like to do, oops, sorry buddy, is I like to take a handful of treats, again, nutritional treats that you can count as daily calories or ideal, and put them in my pocket. And when they're gone, <laughs> I don't have anything, buddy. When they're gone, my lesson's over. So that I don't do it too long, okay? So, 
try it number one. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your hand and you're just going to move it away from your dog slightly just to give them that little interest. And as your dog shows any interest towards it, yes, and then treat. And then you're going to repeat. Yes, and then treat. So you're just moving it away and they'll, they're interesting dogs, interested dogs, and they usually just kind of like gravitate towards it and then yes, and then treat. And then again, treats in your pocket so when they're done they're done you may not get them to actually touch it right away and that's okay that's all right we're just kind of shaping that behavior and eventually what will happen is they will come in they will end up coming in and touching that and then again yes tell them how smart they are and you can also jackpot them every once in a while which means they actually do it and it's really good you can go woohoo and treat treat aren't you so good little scratchy butt um, to get them really excited so the next one I want to do is <laughs> teaching them to go around. Dexter knows all these behaviors because we've taught them in the past. Remember, he's 12. Um, around for me means my dog comes to the right of me and circles around me here. I don't want them to sit, so I'm not doing some kind of like sit finish. Just tricks and things to do with your dog, um, keeping them engaged, indoor activities. So when I practice it, I practice not having him sit. Right? So now this one, what I'm going to do, and, and we have counter, so Dexter's word is around to go to the right of me, Dexter's word counter is to go to the left of me, which if you're just playing around isn't terribly important, but if you're doing things like sports or things like that, it is important to make sure that they know which direction. So what I'm going to do is put treats in both hands. And we want to think about our dog's level. So where's Dexter and you? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go to his nose to the right my right, um, I always think about how I was flipped around, and catch him. So here's food, 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 food. So luring here, and then my left hand's gonna go behind my back and lure back, whoops, around. Good job. So we're gonna come here, lure here, and then back around. So I have food in both hands. So lure here, and then, whoops, I dropped it. And he's gotta try to find it with his ears. Uh-oh, did you find it? Snoods are always good. I keep saying that, good. So here, and then here. Where'd you go? Oh, I lost you. And then here. And as your dog gets better, you lessen the food luring <laughs> so that it ends up being more of a, a point. So you can kind of go around. Yes. Ready? Around. Yes. So now I'm just feeding on the left. Around. Yes. Good job. Okay. Easy cheesy, and it is a pretty easy one. You can also do this behavior by sitting on something. So I'm gonna do food in both hands. <laughs> so I'm gonna lure him around here, and the food's in my left hand so that I can catch him and go around. So luring him around here, treat, and then lure and treat. So the third thing we're gonna do is a hula hoop. So what we wanna do first is we want our dogs to be comfortable. I'm sorry, he's using a hand target. We want our dog to be comfortable with the hoop first. So sometimes, go away dog, they're nervous. And you might take a treat and lure and yes and treat right there just for them interacting with it. Because I don't want to lift it up if my dog's nervous of it being on the floor. So this is a good build. And actually seeing this way, this is actually good footwork too. So, ready? Yes, good job. So what we're doing with this and what we're going to do when we lift it up is them learning that footwork and lifting up those feet, especially those back feet. Good job. The slower the better, monkey. Slow down the monkey. So once they're doing that, we want to go ahead and bring it up, but we don't want to bring it up over their head so they're scared. So again, leave monkey. So we're going to go like this. Let's see. Can't figure, oops. <laughs> and we don't want to drop it on their head. So we gotta leave monkey again, right? So leave monkey and treat too fast. So you're gonna have the treat on your right or left, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Um, I'm gonna have him leave monkey. <laughs> and you're gonna take your treat and you're gonna go to your dog's nose over here. So my arm is through the hoop. And I'm gonna treat and treat. I might stop there if my dog's nervous. Don't drop the hoop on their head. You're not taking this hoop towards them. We don't want to take scary things ever towards our dogs. And if we want to do that side, again, we just don't want to drop it. And it's on, oops, so see, it's on the floor so that if he catches his back leg, he's not going to break his ankle. It's important that whenever you're doing anything where they're jumping over something or going through something, 
that <laughs> if they hit it with that back ankle, it's going to move with them and not get stuck. So don't ever attach your hoops or anything like that where if they jump over it, it doesn't move because you can injure your dog big time. Um, so you're just going to go through it, give them a treat, yes and treat, yes and treat, yes and treat. I, I pretty much keep it, especially him right now, on the ground. If you are building up that jumping through it, Again, you're gonna hold it. Um, so his old man senior jump <laughs> would be maybe two inches at the max, but he's still not lifting up his back feet, so that so it's zero inch. Well, it's it's an inch because this is how how high it is. So don't think about I gotta lift it up. I gotta lift it up. The other thing is remember carpet. So if you're doing any kind of like jumping or anything, please <laughs> you know safety, safety, safety. They need to jump on a surface that they're gonna have grip on so they don't do it on these slick floors they need to have some kind of yoga mat or, or footing that they're not going to fall so i know that you're really excited to jump in and start some of these tricks that i just taught you and i'm so glad that you are that makes me very happy because i love seeing people engage their dogs and have a fun filled life but before you go, if you enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We actually have two YouTube channels. I'll put the links below in the description. If you hear the snorting, Dexter decided to come back and join us. I do also have two private Facebook groups for more canine and feline enrichment. So make sure you check out the description below for more information. And if you want to dive deeper into your dog's training, behavior, and care, do check out my private Patreon group. And as always, remember to pause and enjoy life, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to both of our YouTube channels for more free content.